This is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics Guide. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we got a question. We're gonna kind of bring it back. Bring it back a little old school today. We got a question from a gentleman named Chef Michael, and he wants to know a little bit about an uh, um, old system that I had put together called the Soul Wall. Chef Michael's been doing a little snooze, uh, um, snooping around, being a little nosy, looking at some old videos, and he wants to know what's going on with that sole wall that I used to have built. All right, so let's get into his question right now so you can find out exactly what Chef Michael's over here yapping about. So he says, I went to your oldest video and worked up. What is that you are planting in? It looks like a fence with holes. Is there any more to it? All right, Chef Michael, so we're gonna go ahead and I'll talk a little bit about what it is that you're looking at. This is one of the old videos. I think this is like looking at uh, a baby salad green that I was growing, an old production video that I was growing and made a video out of. And uh, what you're looking at is what I called or named the Soul Wall. It's an old DIY project that I um, got my hands into, put together, just something that I was experimenting with and trying to see what I can come up with. And the results, you know, actually came out pretty good um, once I had the finished product. So you want to know if there's any more to it. I'll kind of give you a breakdown on, you know, how I put it together. So if you're interested in doing something similar to that or doing that, then you, you know, you have the information that you can go out and, um, you know, kind of replicate what it is that you saw. So the sole wall, ladies and gentlemen, this right here is, I use, it's, it's pretty much a fence, a vinyl fence panel that I used, um, I got it from Home Depot. It's like, uh, the brand is, I think it's um, Veranda. It's a Veranda um, vinyl fence panel. It's a six feet by six feet panel. I'm not sure if they still sell those though at Home Depot. When I tried to take a look to find out if it's still there, I couldn't find it. It seemed like the inventory was out and I'm not sure if they sell those anymore. But you could probably find something similar to it if you're interested in um, you know putting it together. So it was a Veranda. Uh, vinyl um, fence panel and the way I made it is when I got the panel what I would do is I would place these horizontal lines on because there's individual panels that make up the the panel the entire fence panel as a collective they're all there they're, you know I think there's about eight to ten of them that are kind of um, put together to make up that one um, panel so on the individual panels what I would do is I would just create a marking a horizontal line going across uh, where I wanted to cut out or carve out a slot where I would place my plants at. Because in between the panel, there's probably like an inch gap once you cut in, start cutting in between there. So I uh, mark a horizontal line across, about five inches across. And then from there, going down the individual panel, I would mark eight inches and draw a horizontal line. Another eight inches, draw a horizontal line for the run of the panel until I got all the way to the bottom. And I would do that on all the panels, all the individual panels. You can do it a staggered um, uh, method, or you can just draw them straight, straight uh, across. I did both, you know, and they both work. So after I finished doing all of them, marking all of them with the horizontal line, then what I would do is I would take a heat gun. You can get one of these at Home Depot as well, uh, or Walmart probably too. Heat gun, you know, it doesn't have to be anything expensive. And... Um, and what I would do is I would place the heat gun about six inches from the panel and I would start heating it, heating it up on the low setting. You don't wanna just start burning through it. On the low setting, I would heat it up and I wanna soften that material because it's hard plastic material. I wanna soften it up so therefore I can create a mold out of it for, to, to place the plants, to sit them in there. Right, so I soften, uh, soften it up and then I would take scissors and then cut across that horizontal line that I had just made as I keep the heat gun on there, right? And then I would also, there's these two vertical lines in this particular uh, fence uh, product. There's two vertical lines that run the length of the, the individual panel as well. And those are kind of in the way of doing what I want to do. They're in the way, so I would heat those up as well and I would cut into those. So it would give me a, um, a more of an opening so I can create my mold for the, um, the plant. So once I cut those off or cut into those, and you want to be careful because you can stick your hand in there and it will poke you. So you got to be very careful. Once I cut into those, then I would take 
between an inch and an inch and a half PVC pipe, preferably an inch and a, a quarter. I would take that, cut, pre-cut, about maybe about two inches, uh, be probably about two inches, place it in there while the material is still soft. Place it in there, and then I would take the heat gun off and let it mold into that shape. Gives you a perfect little kind of like a cup shape. It's nothing different. You, you might have seen these in other vertical towers, the same similar type of shape, that cup type of shape. Right, and I would let it sit for about 15, between 15 and 30 seconds while the material molds around it and it, the plastic becomes hard again. Right, so then I would do that, cut all, or uh, do that to all of the, um, the, the slits that I had created and you would get anywhere between, you know, 60 and 80, somewhere in between there, uh, amount of slots that you can get, which is crazy, 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 the amount of slots you can get to grow plants because the product is only about 40 bucks. You know, if I can remember correctly, only about 40 bucks. So to get 80 slots out of that for 40 bucks is crazy. Like that's crazy. So I will finish that, cut them all up, uh, get them all molded. And now I have my slots where I can place the plant roots in or the plants in there in whatever growing medium I'm using. And, um, and that's where they would sit and grow out. Once I finish with the cut, then I will put them between two four by four posts. You know, you um, get your uh, your post hole digger out, dig you some holes. You know, you got to do your measuring and, and whatnot to fit that panel, the fence panel right in between the two posts. And that would be for your um, pretty much for stability and security. So I place it in between there. Now on the back of the post or the back of the fence, I would place like this conduit bar uh, on, uh, along the uh, uh, horizontally along the top of the fence. I would uh, secure it to the fence and then I would place that horizontal bar uh, on the four by four post and secure it and fasten it down. Right. So that will help keep the structure sturdy. Right. Especially when it's windy and stuff like that, that will help keep it sturdy. Now, what I would do is after that, I would uh, run a piece of uh, PVC pipe along the horizontal line, the top of the, um, the, uh, the, the fence, run it across and I would uh, place holes, drill holes in the PVC pipe and place my irrigation line in there. Little drip tubing that I can um, use. Same thing that you use for any type of, uh, what they use for hydroponics or you know any type of drip tubing. So I think they're about a, uh, 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 about a quarter of an inch, the tubing size, somewhere around there. Right, I'll place it in between or inside of the, the, the PVC pipe. And then what I would do is I would cut on the top of the fence I would drill a hole in the fence, on the top of the fence, and that would give me access to the, um, the back part of the fence, where when you place your tubing in there and the water runs along it, it runs on the back part of the fence, and it can run down pretty much the length of the panel. Therefore, when, it, when the water and nutrients are running down, the plant roots or the plant medium could then have access to the water and nutrients along the entire line or the entire run of the panel. Right, so I placed it, stuck it inside of there, and then now I have my irrigation to supply nutrients to the uh, each individual, you do it for each individual panel. Right, now for my drainage, for the drainage, I took four inch um, drain pipe, same way you can get it from Home Depot, Lowe's, you can get it from uh, you know one of those places, Ace Hardware, I think they might have some there too. And what I would do with that four inch drain pipe is I would cut uh, about an inch or an inch and a half um, hole, uh, pretty much a hole running the line of that pipe, right? I would uh, use a jigsaw and cut um, the, the length of the pipe. You don't want to cut the whole thing, but you want to leave about, I think I left about maybe about four inches on each side just to keep the structure held together. Because if you cut the whole thing, then it's just going to be, uh, you know, wobbly and all. It's going to be flexible. It's not going to hold the structure. You want to keep it to where it can still hold the structure at the end so you can put the rest of your um your, your end caps and stuff on there and continue the plumbing so when i had that slit uh, cut in there that slit i would take and put the fence in between there the bottom of the fence because the bottom of the fence has holes in it right for the drainage to kind of just go through so i would kind of snug it in there it would fit right nice and snug in there fit it in there and that would be my drainage and that pipe that would run eventually back to the sump tank, 
right, where it will be pumped out and then, uh, you know, distributed and then, you know, recycled throughout the entire system. So that's pretty much how that worked. Now, um, when some of the problems that I had with this system, because there's some of them that were associated with it, is some of the clogging from the pipage or from the, uh, the tubing coming into the, uh, the panels. Sometimes those things were clogged, you know, clogged with solids. Also, bacteria and algae would also clog in there, you know, partially because I didn't have, uh, partially because the tubes are, you know, they're, they're pretty small, and partially because my filtration wasn't up to par. I didn't have the greatest filter, so a lot of those solids are going to sneak through, and eventually they're going to accumulate in the tubing. So that's a problem, especially when it comes to hot days. So I had to keep checking. Sometimes I had to top, uh, 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 tap on the top of the, um, the tube to get those solids out, force the water through. You know, open up the valve all the way to let the water kind of pressure the pressurized water forced a lot of the solids and stuff out. But, you know, that was pretty much the main problem. What I thought before, I thought it was going to I was going to have a problem with the the um, the roots accumulating in the system or accumulating in the panel because it was only a narrow passage. And that wasn't really a problem. Surprisingly, that wasn't really a problem. Now, this system here hit. This thing hit. I'm not even going to lie to you. You know, other than those little problems, this system hit. I grew pak choy in there. I grew Swiss chard. I grew um, kale. I grew cabbage. I grew collard greens. I grew mustard greens, um, arugula, um, uh, various other types of herbs were in there. You know, I was even about to start experimenting with some fruiting crops, but if, what eventually happened is I ended up getting bored with it and I ended up taking it down. It used to be right here. It used to be right here. This, this area right here actually was where I had it, right around here. So another thing is it turned a lot of heads as well. When people would pass by, they're like, what the heck is he growing over there? How the heck is he growing, you know, vegetables out of a fence? So a lot of people's heads were turning when, you know, uh, um, as they would drive past. See people driving past, slowly creeping past. I saw one guy driving past slow. He slowed up all the way. He slowed up. This is something I never seen in my life. He slowed all the way up and he was driving and I saw him slowly turning his head. He slowed, slowly turning his head and driving still. He's just looking to see what it is. This man must have turned his head a whole 180 degrees and still driving, looking. I said, I can't even believe how he did that. He turned his whole head. Body didn't move. I could see clearly too. Clear window. I can see his facial expression. Whole head just turned. Boom. I'm like, man, we call those rubbernecks. That's what you call rubbernecks. You see a lot of those people when you see like car crashes on the side of the road, people turning their whole neck. Like like the like like a stretch armstrong. You see what I'm saying? So the system hit. It did hit. And a lot of people would come past looking, staring at it, wondering what it is. So that was one of the things that was kind of unique about it. I mean, obviously, people are going to look. They've never seen plants uh, growing out of a, a fence before. So that's pretty much what it is. That's the soul wall, something that I used to get into, um, you know, uh, experimenting. Would I bring it back out? You know, I'm not sure. I don't know if I, I, I'm going to bring it back out and um, work with it again. It worked. It, it did work uh, very well. It was something that I did like, you know, growing out of. You know, minus the, the problems that it had with the clogging, um, something that I messed with. If I were to do it again, also I would probably look into a more food grade um, product because, you know, the vinyl is a little questionable. You know, a lot of research is, you know, still um, undecisive on how, you know, how uh, harming it could be or harmful it could be uh, for uh, food production and things of that nature. So I'll probably look into something that's more food grade. If it is out there, so, you know, that's the one thing that you want to keep in mind. If you're going to look into trying to do something like this, you want to make sure that, you know, it's not going to cause, you know, anything um, that's going to be harmful to your health. So you do want to keep that in mind. But, you know, I might whip it back out if I feel like it. It depends on how I feel. If I feel like doing it, I'll do it. If I don't, then I won't. You know, so that's just what it is. So that's the soul wall, ladies and gentlemen. Chef Michael, hopefully that has appeased the curiosity on what you were looking at in that video. And um, hopefully that has helped you out, give you some insight, some further insight on what the heck I was getting into and what I was doing. So with that being said, anybody else has questions, 
comments, you can leave them down below in the comment section. Hopefully I'll be able to feature it here on the show and help you guys out, answer some questions. Also, you can click on the link uh, below, get yourself a free aquaponic course, get you the free aquaponic starter guide, which is hot. You get all that in the link below. Also, go to the schoolofaquaponics.com. There's free courses there. There's paid courses where you can enroll and learn the fundamentals of aquaponics and get growing. All right, so with that being said, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics reminding you to stop walking and get you a car. <laughs>